Welcome to the HEC Beverage Server Training Module Program. Each week, the HEC Beverage Team will discuss a new alcohol and bartending skill that will be crucial to your success behind a bar. While this program is not all-inclusive, we hope you will gain a requisite understanding of basic bar knowledge by attending our program. The program is six weeks. Again, each week we will discuss a new liquor or liqueur and skill. After the six weeks, we will release two wine crash course programs. I hope you enjoy. Cheers. Hello, I'm Hunter and I'm a sophomore in the hotel school. I'm gonna be one of the bar managers this year and I'm looking forward to working with all of you on mastering your bartending skills. Outside of HEC, I am on the class councils and orientation steering committee and you can find me outside of Risley playing tennis. This week we will review the importance of free pouring and the fundamentals of vodka. The following tools will be used when free pouring. A liquor bottle. Most liquor bottles have a large enough opening that a speed pour can fit right into the bottle. Occasionally, liquor will have to be transferred into other bottles in order for the speed pour to be attached. The speed pour is the mechanism that allows us to measure liquor using counts. We will discuss counts later. The Boston Shaker is where we will be making most of our cocktails. Typically, all cocktail ingredients will be added to a Boston shaker. A jigger is a tool that we use behind the bar to measure ingredients. Typical sizes include the 1.5 ounce, 1 ounce jigger, and the 1.75 ounce jigger. Jiggers are a great way to practice free pouring as you can check the accuracy of your pour. Now let's talk technique. When holding a liquor bottle, be sure you hold the neck of the bottle and place one finger on top of the speed pour. Do not place your finger over the pressure hole, as this will prevent the proper flow of liquid from the bottle. When measuring liquid from a speed pour, one count correlates to roughly a quarter ounce. We can use speed pours for four main reasons. 1. Speed. Some argue that a jigger can be used to measure ingredients when making a drink. This is not wrong, in fact, using a jigger is more accurate and what will be used at most high-end bars. We use speed pours for speed. HEC weekend is always very busy and we do not have enough time to measure each ingredient using a jigger. 2. Accuracy. Mastering the art of speed pouring will ensure that each cocktail is made with the right amount of ingredients. 3. Taste. Adding the proper amounts of ingredients to a cocktail will ensure the drink tastes right. And lastly, cost. It's important that we master speed pouring so that we don't over pour, pour too much of an ingredient so that we don't waste ingredients and drive our cogs up. If you have tools available to practice speed pouring, feel free to follow along with us. This week we will be focusing on vodka. Join us in learning about how vodka is made and what common cocktails are made with vodka. The production of vodka can be broken down into three main steps. Fermentation, distillation and filtration, and dilution. Yeast is added to raw materials to cause the fermentation reaction and create alcohol. The targeted concentration of alcohol during this stage is roughly 16%. The next step in distillation is distillation and filtration. During this phase, impurities are removed and the alcohol is concentrated up to 96%. In the final stage, water is added to bring down the alcohol concentration. While this is not an in-depth look into how vodka is made, it's a great starting point in understanding the fundamentals of alcohol production. Vodka does not have a strong flavor profile. The difference between vodkas is subtle it's rather a neutral liquor and takes on the flavor of the ingredients it's used with. The slight changes in flavor between different types of vodka are associated with the ingredients used to make it, such as rye versus cereal grains. Vodka should technically be odorless. Cheaper vodka tends to smell like alcohol, but high quality vodka has a very little smell. A few popular vodka brands our kettle, which is made in the Netherlands and distilled with 100% wheat. 
Absolute Vodka, which is made in Sweden and distilled with winter wheat. Grey Goose, which is made in France and also distilled with winter wheat. And Tito's, which is made in the U.S. and distilled with yellow corn, making it gluten-free. Now let's discuss vodka cocktails. A Cosmopolitan is a classic vodka cocktail. It is made with vodka, triple sec, fresh lime, and cranberry. The drink is shaken and strained into a martini glass. The garnish for a Cosmo is a lime. A Cape Cod, most typically known as a vodka cranberry, is made with vodka and cranberry juice. This cocktail is built in a highball glass and garnished with a lime. A screwdriver, most typically known as a vodka orange, is made with vodka and orange juice. This cocktail is built in a highball glass and garnished with a flag. A flag is a term used to describe a garnish with an orange and a cherry. The last vodka drink we will be reviewing is a Moscow Mule. A Moscow Mule is made with vodka, lime, and ginger beer. Ginger beer is a non-alcoholic sparkling beverage. This drink is built in a copper mug, typically, and topped with ginger beer. When we top drinks, we fill the remaining space in the glass with the ingredients we are topping with. Most of the time, we top drinks with carbonated ingredients as they can't be shaken. Moscow Mule is garnished with a lime. I hope you enjoyed learning about vodka and free pouring this week. Next week, we are excited to release a new module. Stay tuned to hear more about what we are teaching in a few moments. We hope that this program will give you insight into the basic skills you need when working behind a bar. As we navigate the COVID-19 pandemic, we will not be hiring beverage servers this April as an in-person event is not feasible at this time. That being said, I hope you continue this journey with us. Have a great week. Cheers, the beverage team.